So then we had Renee with Orange Hook and Shibata, and Orange is about to make an announcement, and Wheeler Yuta shows up, and he makes fun of Orange for uh, having to use an exposed buckle to beat Moxley, he calls Hook a young boy, and he's very upset that Shibata is walking around with his belt. So he told, uh, tells Hook to uh, watch my Pure Rules match, and he vows He to, told Shibata to watch it, not yes. Hook. Yes. So, so, so Yuta and Hook is already over, and now we're at Yuta and Shibata. Well, uh, it shouldn't be. Well, it is. It That's should, what he, that doesn't he, make any it, sense. He cut his he cut his promo on Shibata, not on Hook, and Hook was right there, standing there I after all that build. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why, but uh, I'm just telling you that's that he didn't he didn't talk about Hook. He, he didn't talk about, about Sh- Hook, but I'm telling you, he he's gotta come on. Yeah, he's he pinned the FTW champion. Yeah, this is like the Swerve Keith Lee feud. God help me. MJF and Adam Cole came out, and they had a long segment. By, by the way, by the way, there's something else also. Um, they debuted the promotion for Wu Energy on the show tonight. Yeah, well, all, all over, over that place. big screen. All over the big screen and on in the, the, the cans in front of the announcers. So, uh, yeah, they had, like, made that big announcement for it, and then a couple weeks, like, no mention of it. But here it is. So I guess it's, it's, I guess it's now starting. This, the campaign started this week. So Cole's on crutches. MJF is walking with a cane. And he talks about how he beat an undefeated Jay White, learned that he was one of the best wrestlers in the world, but nobody is as good as he is. He's the youngest, most successful, greatest AEW champion of all time. He could not have done this without Adam Cole. And Adam Cole says, you know, I I still can't walk, much less wrestle, working my ass off to get back as quickly as possible. But I'm worried about you, Max. You're You're doing too much. And MGF says, well... I'll tell you what, the, the, the Cole promo sounded to me like it's a long time before we're going to see him in the ring. It sure does sound that way. I mean, it sounds like he's going to, you know, he's still on crutches. He still has to go through physical therapy. You know, it's, I mean, it's it's not like it's going to be a three-month thing, I don't think. I mean, no one's given a time frame, but boy, the way he talked, it sounded like it'd be a while. So MGF says, to the man behind my mask, I will find you, and uh, the hell I'll send you to will feel like heaven. He got booed a couple times when he, uh, first when he brought up about how he beat a guy twice one night in Chicago, which was punk, he got booed for that. And then when he put over um, Long Island, he got booed for that. And he tried to kind of get the crowd by saying, I like Chicago, I like deep dish pizza. It didn't work. They did not buy. They did not buy that one. It was a weird thing. I mean, he he certainly got cheered, um, you know. Aside from those spots, but uh, I mean, you know, I don't know why he threw the punk spot in because that was like a guarantee that he would get booed, you know, by by doing that. Plus, it brings up punk, which I don't think is in anyone's best interest at all right now. Um, the other one where he put over a NASA. I mean. That made sense because it's, you know, again, when he goes to Nassau for the pay-per-view, the idea is he's going to be this giant baby face. So, you know, if, if the people in Chicago boot him over that, I mean, that's just tough, you know. But that one, that, that line made sense. So the lights go out, the devil appears and laughs, and then the lights come back on and Samoa Joe comes out. And he wants a championship rematch because uh, MJF promised it to him. And MJF says, I thought long and hard about this, and I have a reasonable and mature response. And he says something that is totally bleeped, but the answer is no. And Joe's furious. And then Cole jumps in and he says, MGF, the old you would say that, but this new Max, my best friend, you need to be a man of your word. You need to accept this guy's challenge because you promised. And so MGF said, all right, well, you know what? You want this match, Samoa Joe? We can have it right now here in Chicago. And Cole's freaking out, and Joe says, that's not going to happen. I don't want you complaining tomorrow you weren't 100%. It wasn't fair. I want the best version of you, a fully healed Max. So, world's end. You should be nice and chipper to get in the ring, defend that title. So Max agreed, and they shook hands. And then Samoa Joe basically told him, I'm going to watch your back. I'm going to make sure nobody touches you. And then at the Nassau Coliseum, I will beat you unmercifully and strangle you to death in front of your friends and family. So my guess is, from this promo and the injury that MGF suffered at the pay-per-view, I would guess he has very few, if any, matches between now and Nassau. 
It doesn't make any sense to for give him, him to have plenty of to, time to heal up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably shouldn't be wrestling because of the, because of the injuries and everything. Joe did a really good job on the promo. I mean, Max did too. But I mean, I thought Joe Joe is uh, he's been underutilized for much of his career, and right now he's in a point where I mean, he's very confident in his talking, and he's always been, but he comes off really strong, and um, it's you know the first match did well TV ratings. I think, um, you know, I mean, Max in his hometown in a pay-per-view, you know, I mean, the advance is fine, but uh, I think there's, I think that, you know, again, a lot of AEW tickets get sold late now because people realize that um, ticket prices are going to drop. So I think that they'll do pretty well there. Um, you know, they did really, really well in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, it's Max's hometown, and it's the first time they've done a pay-per-view in new york city itself um it's christmas or december week they are a couple days after a, a, the garden show so that does hurt you know and but but uh you know um and the garden show will probably do very well because that's the kind of the traditional december 26th show but um yeah i think uh um but you know i, I think uh Joe, Joe did a pretty darn good job on that promo. Orange Cassidy, Hook, and Shibata versus Daddy Magic, Cool Hand, and Jake Hager. So Orange grabbed the mic for the match that I had a Thanksgiving surprise, and it was the return of Danhausen. And so he came down to the ring, and near the end he jumped up on the apron and pulled out the old hat that Jake Hager loved, and Jake is furious, and Danhausen cursed him, and... Hook got a tag, and then him and Shibata choked out Daddy Magic and Cool Hand, got the double submission, and it was a fun match, is what this was. It was all right. Kind of, kind of, I mean, nah, eh, didn't do a lot for me. Renee was with Adam Cole, and Roddy showed up. He said, Adam, saw you were there on Saturday. Sorry we didn't catch up, but where were you on Friday when I landed on my head, almost killed myself? And Cole says, Roddy, shut up. You're not my best friend anymore. And you need to do me a favor, back off and leave me the hell alone. He walks off on Roddy, and Roddy is very sad. Christian came out with Nick and Luchasaurus. What a segment this was. Oh, my God. So Christian says, great champion, gracious in victory, but I did not lose on Saturday. Nick did not lose on Saturday. Luchasaurus, you lost on Saturday. And he says, that's unacceptable. He says, Luchasaurus, take a knee. And Luchasaurus doesn't want to do it, but Christian calls him a moron, demands he take a knee, and so he finally does. And he says, your name, Luchasaurus, will always be associated with a loser, so I've come up with a new name for you. Starting on Saturday, your new name will be Kill Switch. And Luchasaurus did not seem happy about that. And so then Nick takes a knee, and Christian tells him to get up. He says, you're different, you're special, you're my golden boy, my son, you will forever be known as the Prodigy Nick Wayne. Isn't that the name that he used from the very beginning? Yes. I was hoping that Christian was going to change his name to Nick Cage. But it didn't Nicholas happen. Cage. Nicholas Cage. That would have been good. Yeah. 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 So then all of a sudden, who should hit the ring but Nick Wayne's mom? Who they, in fact, called Shayna. Her name is now Shayna Wayne. They've given her a name, finally, after all of these months. Isn't, isn't, that's her name, right? Shayna? Well, uh, that's her. Uh, that's the name she used modeling. It's not her actual name. Oh, it's it not? It would be her gimmick name. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. I just remember her as Shayna. Well, she's always kind of gone as Shayna. Yeah. But uh, Christian wanted to know why she was here. Said she was a terrible mother. Says she made 40000 a year being a waitress, but this kid's a prodigy. Do you think he wanted his mother to be a waitress? Good thing your husband is dead already. Nick would have disowned his father anyway. He knows his father was never as good a father as I was, nor he was he the man or father that I am. He wasn't good as a wrestler either. He made a point of that. He says, do me a Which favor. Which actually he wasn't. Even though he was a good wrestler, he wasn't as good as Christian. Well, few people are, but he was pretty damn good. Yeah. He yeah. Says, I mean, I know Nick. Nick um, yeah. But he was a good wrestler, yeah. Do me a favor and get the hell out of my ring. So Luchasaurus has heard enough, and he stands in between Shane and Christian. And Christian says, get on your knees. And Luchasaurus refused to budge. Christian slaps him. The fans are chanting for Luchasaurus. Christian says, if you don't take a knee, I'm going to force you to take off that mask and show your hideous face right now. So Luchasaurus refuses to get on the knee. So Christian shoves him. Luchasaurus flies back, and he 
bonks right into Shayna. She flies into the top rope, takes this bump. She's down. Nick is angry, but he doesn't do anything. And Christian says, go get a chair. So Nick goes, and he gets two chairs, and he throws them into the ring. Christian's going to do the concerto on Shayna. But before he can, he gives the chairs to kill switch. He says, I want you to do it. But, of course, Adam Copeland's music hits. He rushes down to make the save. Spears Nick, goes after Christian. Kill switch makes a save for him. Copeland then gives Nick another spear. Impaler DDT gives him the concerto right in front of his mother, who's crying. So many horrible people in this segment. Oh, my God. And so Nick is Nick is dead. Shayna is very upset. And, uh, and so, so, so does that mean that Shayna is going to turn on edge? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, clearly she's uh, she's a character now. Okay, so here's the thing. So so um, Nick's got to be with the concerto. He's got to be out for a couple weeks, right? He should be out for a while. I mean, he should be. He should be. That's In theory, they... yes, he should be out for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't know, but I mean, that's usually how it's sold. I mean, look, we got a guy pulmonized, and he was back in a couple hours. But, but hey, he came back. He did come back. But he was injured. He's on a cane today. He could barely get in the ring. Yeah. At least he sold it. No, he sold it all right. Yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.